Hi guys, welcome back to Delare Studios. We're still on the Android Image Gallery using Glide and Picasso. In the earlier video, we integrated the share functionality. Let's wrap things up with the download. And uh, we're going to be learning two different things uh, in this video. Firstly, how to request and issue a runtime permission in Android. Uh, this came to place uh, in Android 6.0 API 23, that is the Marshmallow uh, and above, you have to issue out runtime permission. Uh, but for uh, Android APIs lower than this, uh, you could uh, add up the permission in the Android manifest. You're good to go with that. Uh, the second implementation would be uh, the download process. Well, we'll be using the HTTP URL connection and uh, the async tags which will also be showing the download progress in a dialog. So we're actually going to be covering these two uh, functionalities in this application. Let us straight to Android Studio. Uh, we'll focus majorly on the slideshow dialog fragments since uh, we've been working on this uh, application from scratch. And we're at this point where we'll need to display uh, the share icon and the download icon, which you could see from the fragment. I will have implemented the share of we'll be doing that for the download. So we will focus in on the sh on the slideshow dialog fragments. Firstly, we will be looking at the permission integration. I'll be doing that quickly. Uh, the final integer, which is a constant, uh, the, my permissions write external storage. That's the permission we'll be needing because we'll be downloading and saving to the uh, external directory. So for you to actually do that uh, on runtime, uh, in the onCreate method, that's the target, you need to uh, issue out uh, the check permission. Firstly, you check the permission, if it's uh, granted or not. Uh, that's going to go up for APIs lower than uh, the 23, which is much value. So they could run without any crash. So once you check that, uh, if it is granted or not, firstly, if it's not granted, uh, you could uh, actually show an explanation and that this should be uh, done asynchronously. Uh, that is, uh, it shouldn't block the thread because you need uh, the user the user to uh, move further with the instruction, probably to accept or de decline. Now. If that is uh, set, you issue out the, the permission, which uh, is requesting uh, the manifest, which is the right to external storage. Once once you do that, uh, you need to actually uh, to catch up the permission request. Uh, that uh, you need to override on request permission result. So that takes three parameters: the request code, the permission. Uh, which could actually be an array, probably one, two, three permissions you're trying to grant at once, and uh, the grant results for each of the permission. So you have that uh, as the three parameters, and uh, you need a switch to uh, specify the permission in question, because you could actually issue out more than one permission here. So if you're doing that, uh, you need to create the constants for the other permission, probably to assess con 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 contract or to uh, to access uh, the internet we have different uh, permission the wake lock or so on so you could actually uh, set that up in the int and uh, the case is focusing on the right external storage once you have that uh, set up uh, you need to get the results which we have here the first case so if it's granted uh, you actually request and uh, the result areas are, are empty. So if it's not granted, uh, definitely you need to disable any functionality that depends on that permission. So that's just the two things uh, you need to handle. So with that, you issue out a runtime permission. So after that, you could move further in the download process. Uh, in the download process, we'll be using uh, the progress dialog uh, to to let us know the duration of download which will start from 0 to 100 so you need to call the progress dialog a class right there as a global scope so that you could use in the course 
of the methods you're declaring in the 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 click on the download because that's uh, the point of contact where you set the on click listener to the download and you override the on click method we also do that uh, in the share uh, which actually sends down to the share item method taking uh, the set image link string as a parameter now in the on click uh, you need to instantiate the progress dialog and uh, set the message set the determinate to true set the progress style uh, horizontal or vertical and set the cancelable to true so you could actually cancel if that's a very good uh, approach you should, you should give uh, the user uh, they will always want to cancel some long running uh, downloads so you should actually give them that room as well in the course of uh, the download process there's a class called the download tax uh, this is an inner tax inner class rather in the show dialog fragments and uh, it's a final uh, class which you, you need to trigger and at that point in time you create an object from it where you execute the URL that is the async tax we're going to look at which will actually help us do the download in the background and uh, get that done so let's get to look at the download tax merge class which extends the async tax it takes in three generics string integer and string so we'll be expecting uh, two string implementation with an integer uh, which we'll also be using the wake lock and what's the wake lock wake lock is a mechanism to indicate that your application needs to have the device stay on uh, throughout the process of uh, running uh, the download so we'll be using that as well a constructor the download tax where you get a context fixed in there and you need to override the doing background you know override a couple of methods doing background on pre-execute on progress updates and on post execute uh, those methods uh, are useful for you, you know, before the execution during the execution and after the execution those are the three aspects now in the doing background that's where you call the input stream the output the HTTP URL connection we've talked about this uh, even when you're trying to consume uh, online JSON, passing the JSON object in the arrays and passing them down to the SQLite database, saving them, and so on. So we're also using this HTTP URL connection to do the magic. Now you expect a callback of 200. That's okay. So we don't mistakenly save the error report instead of the file. Okay. Let's move further. Uh, we have the file length, uh, which will actually display the download pass the percentage which might be minus one so the server did not report the length so we call the get content length and uh, with that you download the file uh, calling the connection get input stream uh, which the connection is actually uh, coming from uh, the let's get to know where the method uh, is actually the HTTP URL connection you should know where the object is coming from which calls the get input stream uh, method from the class and now uh, you have your output also as the output stream uh, instantiating the file output stream uh, that's where you point out uh, the directory you want the file to go to it's going to go to the next internal storage or let's say uh, if you are using an internal uh, device uh, storage rather it's actually going to save out of uh, the folders so if you could vividly see it and if you are using a uh, NASD card you could save there too as well so you actually call in the external storage public directory uh, which you have here and uh, using the system time milliseconds even if you are downloading uh, the same picture image file name it uh, at the same time you, you can't have the same milliseconds so that's just going to differentiate it and it's going to catch the download as well now this is a loop through the, uh, the data because it's coming back in a the, in the byte uh, array which you have and uh, you could also allow cancelling with the back button so at this point in time uh, it moves further to publish the progress of the download so it's uh, actually it has created a path now it's getting the file downloaded to the path created you need to catch uh, some exceptions uh, the exception uh, which uh, could 
come from the input and output section. And finally, uh, you need to close the, connect the output and also the input. Uh, you need to close them and uh, set that uh, completed. So you'd be overriding the on execute and the on progress update. In the on pre execute, you take the CPU lock to prevent CPU from going off if the user presses the power button during the download. So the progress dialog keeps showing and uh, it's actually not going to cancel out uh, the download. So on progress update, if we get here, uh, the length is known now, set the indeterminate progress dialog to false, which uh, will be done in the on progress update. And on post execute, uh, you will release the wake lock. You will also dismiss the progress dialog. So at this point in time, uh, you could post to the user that is the download error where you could actually also pass in the cost of the error, probably no internet. So these are some things you need to handle, uh, probably no internet connection or uh, there is a bad gateway or the bad URL or the, or the URL in question is not found. So you could actually let the user understand the cost of the error. And the file downloaded, that's the sources if downloaded uh, correctly. So you have that uh, message. So that covers the full implementation of the, uh, the, the download process and uh, even uh, integrating a runtime permission to an Android uh, application, uh, which is uh, predominant to API 23, starting from Marshmallow and above. Uh, so you should also uh, develop to suit different uh, devices across Android. So cool, with this you are good to go in the manifest for use case, you could add the permission to wake lock, right, to external storage. You could also, uh, I, will, I will give this as an assignment uh, for you to actually uh, add the wake lock permission at runtime uh, because uh, the right internal storage, external storage fine. Uh, you could also uh, set this permission at runtime, the wake lock. Uh, you have that uh, set up so cool this is going to run across multiple devices I'll be showing uh, the the emulator uh, probably won't be have a screencast presently uh, the, the emulator could still work uh, we'll be getting back to our screencast as time goes on so we have the image could you see that's the fragment and uh, the share icon and also the download from the cloud icon as well so we're going to strike on the download from the cloud to actually uh, get that uh, downloaded now let's see what happens can you see that completed file downloaded we have it downloaded and we could uh, actually find it uh, in a directory uh, which probably because i'm using an emulator if you use a device getting that will be very much easier and you could even move cut copy paste somewhere else you want in the file so we have it the pictures that's it uh, over here uh, save in the miscellaneous files so uh, we'll be ending this video at this point in time and i'll be sharing the source code uh, to my github uh, you could and also uh, share the link so you could pick up the source code from there and uh, i'll be saying thank you very much for hanging out with me throughout uh, this video i hope you learned one or two things from this analysis and uh, we implore you to please uh, strike on the download link uh, on the subscribe button. Uh, thank you. And I uh, will say bye bye for now. Have a 